answer is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. Sing for the freedom He has won. Even death is dead and done. His life has overcome. Speak, say the name above all names, over every broken place. He is risen from the grave. What he's done, what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Oh, my future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. Now, on the throne of majesty, the Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. Hallelujah to the King, He is worthy to receive all the worship we can bring. What He's done, what He's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son, my sins are forgiven, oh my future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. What He's done, what He's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. Atmosphere is changing, nothing stays the same. Heaven is waiting for the mention of his name. Spirit is moving, burning like a flame, healing the broken for the one we proclaim. Raise it up, fill the sky, chains will fall, mountains move, we lift him high, speak the name, the name above all other names, speak the name, the name I'm 
above all other names. Speak the name, the name the wind and waves obey. All of heaven's coming down. Fill the earth with the sound of the name, the name of Jesus. Speak the name.
You can either give online in the, on the app, or up here is the little blue mailbox, the big blue mailbox actually, with envelopes and pens if you want to give that way. Today's offering verse is 1 Peter 2, 1 through 2. This is actually from tonight's message. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. That's it, okay. 
and ended in a comma, so I wasn't sure if there was more there. <clears throat> okay, let's pray. <laughs> Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. And I just pray your blessing upon everyone here and those that can give, those that can't tonight, those that give online, those that are watching online, Lord. We just pray your blessings over them. We ask your blessing on the offering tonight and ask that you would multiply it and that you would give us the wisdom to use it in the ways that you see fit and that needs can be met. And we, we thank you for your abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Father, I give thanks for who you are, Lord, and who we are to you, Lord, that we are children of God, Lord. I just uh, ask that you speak through me tonight, Lord. Speak the truth, Lord, that we all hear it with open hearts, or open ears, and open eyes, that we can all see and hear you tonight, Lord. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yes, you are. I just give thanks for you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. How is everybody? I always got to be careful to ask that, right? Never, never know how, how everybody's going to respond. Let me wet my whistle here before we keep going. <clears throat> so we're going to be continuing in our uh, series with First Peter, Living Hope. And tonight... I'm going to apologize up front. Kathy always told me never to apologize, but I'm going to apologize because some of the things I say tonight, it's probably going to hit home. It's probably going to sting a little, probably going to sting a lot. But you know what? God told me to tell you to grow up. Grow up. That's our service or our sermon topic today. In 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, therefore rid yourself of all malice and all deceit hypocrisy, envy, and slander, and every kind, and slander of every kind. There we go. Like newborn babies crave pure 
spiritual milk so that it may so that you may grow up in your salvation wow that's our theme for tonight is grow up where's nancy she needs to stand up wherever she's at <laughs> okay it's pick on short people night so there's a should be a another slide there there we go little baby I just found it on just Google little baby feeding. And that's really who we are. At some point, we're born again, right? And just as newborn babies, we need our milk, right? We don't need the substitute stuff. We don't need all this uh, stuff, right? And we do what we can because we want our kids to do what? Grow up big and strong. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we feed them the best of our ability. We feed them the best that we can, just like God feeds us. And sometimes even we have to sacrifice what we eat so that they can eat well. Sometimes we got to do that. So there's a little chart here that I found too on Google. Google's like my best friend lately. If I can't find a sermon, I just Google it, right? Busted. Uh... So, basically what Paul is telling us to do is to put away sin. Not Paul, Peter. Yes, let's get that right. Peter is telling us to put away sin. Crave the truth. Crave that pure milk. And as we grow in our salvation, we grow up to meat. Just like kids do. We eat the formula, drink the milk, and then we graduate later to the good stuff, right? Or more good stuff. In 1 Peter 2, 3, and 4, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him like living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. So we will be rejected by God. Not by God, excuse me. Woo, by men. I didn't have enough coffee. So, Hey, there we are eating the big, big people food. Look at that. And who likes peas? Really? Oh, that, was my, that was like my kryptonite when I was growing up. <laughs> but this little guy here, boy, he's, he wants to be a grown-up, wear his big boy pants and just move up, right? And that's what we should do. So God chose us, and we will be rejected by men. Don't like that, but hey, a fact's a fact. And here's something else. We are the living stone. More at that at the 10 o'clock news tonight. So stick around. In 1 Peter 2 through 5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Being built into a spiritual house. That means we're growing, right? Just like a house, a new house being built. Start from the ground up. Start building us up. Right? Just like a little baby. Start growing up. You see a theme here? Grow up. So, as a child of God grows up, then he starts eating grown-up food, right? Just like we saw the little kid there. We're no different as born-again Christians. We are children, and we sometimes need to start off slow, drinking that milk, that pure spiritual milk, and then graduate to the meat, the big stuff. So what happens when we eat properly? Let's think about that for a minute. When we eat good and we eat healthy, what normally happens? Yeah. Ready? We feel good. That's right. We grow up to be big and strong, right? Just like that little one there, starting eating his peas. <laughs> but sometimes we go for the junk food, right? The quick fix. Uh, oh, there's a lot of sinners in here, let me tell you. What, do I hear an amen for junk food? What was that? No, but sometimes yeah, there's the, the, the quick fix, right? 
just run by, I'm not going to say anything, but run by the quick burger joint and get that healthy stuff, right? Nah, it's junk food, and they call it junk food for a reason. I'm kind of a donut junk food type of guy, but hey, it's bread, right? Break bread, break donuts, it's all the same. Oh, there's my favorite slide. I didn't even have to look for it for that. I didn't have to Google that. I had that on my phone. <laughs> hey, sweetie, you need anything from the store? Sure. All of the above. So Peter tells us that sin is a quick fix because it makes us feel good. It's a quick relief from wherever we're at. It's easy. And it makes us feel good. Don't deny it. Eating that chocolate donut, I'll admit, makes you feel good. But then what happens? Right? We crash. Yeah, and I had to make a note in here to myself that remind myself that donuts are not bread. But when you come to my house, we will break donuts. I guarantee you. So when we exercise, kind of the same thing. We feel healthier, stronger, wiser. Now here's something that I heard. Yeah, but you wear out your knee joints. Your joints get bad. Your muscles ache. All that stuff. Why is that? More to come. So we start off with pure milk, and then we grow up to the meat and potatoes. Grow up. There's a uh, speaker, I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not, Zig Ziglar. Anybody ever heard of Zig Ziglar? Yes. Kind of a southern accent. I just love that guy. I used him even when I was in the Navy, teaching a lot of naval leadership. I used a lot of his examples. He has an analogy about a plane. I think I got a plane there. See the plane up in the sky? And I'm going to kind of dissect this a little bit. So you see that sometimes on your right that the plane's kind of kind of clear, clear skies, a little hazy. But the one on the left there, looks like there might be a little bit of turbulence there, right? But we're, the plane is designed to fly, right? Now what happens to that plane over time? It wears out right? They need to bring it in for maintenance, and sometimes they even retire them because they're done. So here's the thing. We are the plane, and God wants us to fly, and we will wear out in the heavens. What if we don't do that? Well, look at this guy. Been kind of sitting out in the field, eating junk food, no maintenance. What happens? You're going to rust out on the ground, so you have a choice to grow up and fly or rust out on the ground. So to keep these planes in the air, again, there has to be maintenance done on them, oil changes, all these safety checks and all that stuff, just like us, right? To keep our self going, we need to check our gas tank once in a while, make sure that we're, we're feeding, make sure that we're doing what we need to do, exercise and whatnot. And you put junk food in it, we're not going to perform very well. And if you sit around and do nothing, you're going to be like that one plane, rusting out in the field. So let's fly in the heavens, just like God intended for us to do. In 1 Peter 2, 6, 7, 6 through 7, for in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone builders rejected has become a capstone. Let's figure out what that means here. Everybody heard this, the song, Cornerstone, right? That Jesus is a cornerstone. Everybody know what a cornerstone is? No. Well, guess what? We're going to learn about that today. So this is an example of a building that they're building. And you see that the big block down at the bottom there. That's called a cornerstone. So in the, when they start building, even in the old days and even in today, you have this block or whatever that you start from. And it's square. And it's sound. 
and it's solid. And every measure that you measure from that house, you use that cornerstone as a guideline. So therefore, everything that is built from that, that point out is always going to be from that first measurement, that first block, whenever they built like brick homes and whatnot, they have the cornerstone that they know is perfect. And who is our cornerstone? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's move on here a little bit more. This is a keystone. See how at the, the rocks come together there, or the brick or whatever, and then there's that one little wedge in there. That's called a keystone. That kind of supports everything, kind of puts it all together and holds it. And then the stone right above that is actually called a capstone. So if your cornerstone is not square, sound, solid, the rock, right? Everything that moves up from that point is going to be what? On shaky ground, right? And everything will fall. We need that good foundation. We need Jesus Christ to be our cornerstone. In 1 Peter 2 through 8, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also why, or also what they are destined for. So again, these cornerstones, if we have the wrong cornerstone, we have false beliefs, lies that we base our foundation on, everything from that point moving forward is worthless, is it not? So first Peter, or Peter is telling us about this, that you got to have that foundation. You got to have that cornerstone. If not, it'll all fall down. We, we are destined to fail without Jesus. There's no way to win without Jesus. He is the cornerstone, which we all should be built upon. So again, in 1 Peter 2.5, it says, we are being built into a spiritual house. That's what all this stuff is coming. We are the spiritual house, right? We need that cornerstone. We need that good milk when we were born again to learn, and then we grow, and we get the meat and potatoes, right? And 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into the wondrous light. We are all chosen by him. Every one of us, we're all chosen. Let's start acting like it. Let's grow up. Let's grow up together. In 1 Peter 2.10, once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We're all granted God's mercy. We will stumble. We will stumble. Let me say that again. We will stumble. But with God's love, God's mercy, and God's grace, we will never fail. Wow. We will never fail. So let's grow up. The worship team is going to sing the song that they sang just before they sat down, Who You Say I Am. Let's sing that together. Yeah. 
So we're a child of God, and we need milk. We need that pure spiritual milk, and we need to grow together. That's why you're here, so we can grow together. Victor E. Frankel, I think is how you say his name, he's a Holocaust survivor, and he's a famous neurologist, psychiatrist, and philosopher, and he once said... When a person can't find a deep, a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. Ever heard that? Yep. So when we're trying to grow and the tough gets tough, the going get tough, however you want to say that. I know I messed that one up. But uh, it gets tough. And sometimes we want the easy way out, right? We don't want that pure milk. We don't want that meat and potatoes. We go for the snacks. Don't distract yourself. Go for the pure milk. Go for the meat. Go for the grown-up food. And here's another thing here. I saw this, and I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Let's don't settle for comfortable lies. But let's settle for the unpleasant truth. Sometimes, like today, grow up kind of hurts a little bit. Yep, we got to be better. Got to do better. We are all children of God. This is the Father's house. Right? Let's start acting like it. Let's grow up. We are being built into a spiritual house to spread the word. Be the best in your spiritual house. Heavenly Father, I give thanks for you. I give thanks that we are all children of you. We're all born again, Lord. We ask for that pure milk, Lord, just, just to guide us and to lead us, that we may grow up to be that full spiritual house that you want us to be, Lord, to continue to spread your word
We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Wow. So next week, still in the book of First Peter, uh, I think I'm preaching again, and it's going to be on submission brings freedom. This is just for Nancy. It, it said obey, but I changed it to submission just for you. Love you guys. Hope to see you next week.